Hello, welcome to the Maths Kitchen. Today we're looking at sequences. In particular, we're looking at the nth term of sequences. So I'll be showing you what that means, how we can find out the nth term of a sequence, and to begin with, why it's useful. Why do we need to know it? So let's say you've got a simple sequence, like the one you can see up here. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven. You can, well, Rod, what's going to come next in that sequence? Uh, 13. Right. Because, how do you know? Because it's going up by 2. Right. So the next one would be 15 and 17 and so on, right? So with a sequence like that, it's pretty easy to work out what's coming next. But what isn't easy is to say, well, what would be the hundredth term in that sequence? Okay, by term, I just mean like the hundredth number that's going to come up in that sequence. Okay? That's a lot harder to do, isn't it? Uh, I'm trying to think of it now. I can't do it. No. So we, the, the purpose of the nth term is to, is to be able to do that, to be able to really quickly just go, right, I've got this system now, I know what the hundredth term is going to be, I know what the thousandth term is. In fact, you could ask me to find the millionth term. What's and the millionth I'll, term? Then? Uh, well, for this one, it's going to be mm -hmm, two million and one. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me, tell them. Okay, right. So I'm going to go back a step, okay? So if you think about the three times table, three, six, nine, 12, and so on, that's going up in threes. And to find the first term in that sequence, well, because it's a three times table, you're doing one times three. To find the second term, you do two times three, because that's how the three times table works, right? It's one times three, two times three, three times three, four times three, and so on. So if you wanted to find a hundredth term of that sequence, it's going to be 100 times 3, so that would be 300. If you wanted the millionth term of the 3 times table, it's 3 lots of a million, 3 times a million, so it would be 3 million. Okay? Happy with that? Yeah. Right. Now, the sequence that we had, the 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, it's going up in 2s. So it's, it's very similar to the 2 times table. The 2 times table is the one that goes up in 2s. So this is, this is, it's like it's a relation, the two times table. And it's basically exactly the same as a two times table, except it's all shifted along one place. It's like we've added one number onto all of the numbers in the two times table. So instead of two, four, six, eight, it's three, five, seven, nine. Okay? So the way we would describe that using the nth term is we would say, it's like the two times table, so we would call that 2n. That's essentially what 2n means. It's describing the two times table. Only it's all shifted along one place, or you could think of it, it's, got, it's had one added to it. So we would say it's like the two times table with one added to it. So 2n add one. Two times table with one added onto it. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Brilliant, right, okay. So, <laughs> well, I'm gonna give you one to practice, okay? okay. Um, so let's do uh, four, and pause, I'll, I'll put this up here, pause the video, you have a go as well, see if you can work out what the nth term of this would be. So four, seven, 10, 13, 16. Right, so, so hopefully you've, you've, you might have been able to work it out, you might have been able to do that. If not, I'll go through it now. Um, Rod, did you, what did you think? Um, <laughs> um, so what's, what was the question again? Um, so the nth term is where you say, well, for the previous example, we were yeah. saying 2n plus 1. is That's our way of describing that whole sequence. <laughs> so it's, it's stepping up. Right, we're still rolling, yeah. Okay. Yes. Right, it's going up in threes, absolutely. Right, yeah. okay. So the n of that yeah. would be... Well, if it's going up in threes, yeah. that means it's like it's to do with the three times table. It's, yeah. it's some kind of relation of the three times table. And if it's to do with the three times table, we just, we describe that as three N. Right. And then we've got to work out, has it been shifted up or shifted it's been down? shifted up twice. No, it's been shifted up to four. Right. Which so that's means, one shift. Exactly. So it would be whatever and one. Yeah. 
So 3n add 1. Yeah. That's how we okay. describe that. That's the nth okay. term of that sequence. Okay. Right. And so to address the other question that I mentioned in the intro, why is that useful? Well, it means we can, now if I ask you what the hundredth term of that sequence is, the, the 4, 7, 10, 13, mm. that sequence, we've got this little formula now. We've got this little rule. Um, I'll speak to you actually. We've got this little rule now. Uh, we've said that it's 3n plus 1. So if I want to find the hundredth term, I'm going to replace that n with a hundred. So I do 3 times a hundred, add 1. So the hundredth term would be 301. If I want to find the 200th term, I replace that n with 200. So I do 3 times 200, add 1. So it would be 601. Okay? That is it. That's all you have to do. Um, I, I will go through some more because it takes a little bit of practice, but I'll put some questions up here. You have a go, pause the video, see if you can do them on your own, and I'll go through them as well in just a moment. Okay, so the first one, 8, 13, 18, 23, 28, um, Rods, talk me through it. Right, I think it's obviously fives, it's going up in fives. It's going up in fives, so it's to do with the five times table. It's five times table, so it'll go up to, but then it's three on because it's going up to eight. Okay, so therefore it'll be 500. The hundredth term will be 503. That is correct, because you do five times 100 and you add three. Okay. But the nth term, like this general rule that we have for describing it, right. what would that be? When we say it's like, it's to do with the five times table, but you add three. <laughs> it's five, you lot remember, uh, it's five N plus three, okay? Right. Five N, because it's to do with the five times table, yeah. and then you add three. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll quickly go through the other ones. So we had nine, 11, 13. So it's going up in twos. Therefore, it's it's to do with the two times table, but it's been shifted on. So it's two N, and in fact, we had to add on seven. To go from the two times table to this sequence, we've got to move on seven places. So it's two N, add seven. The next one, which was uh, 15, 19, 23, it's going up in fours. So it's to do with the four times table, so it's four N. Um, but it starts on 15, so we've had to move up 11 places, okay? So uh, it's 4n, add 11. The next one, 35, 45, 55, is going up in tens. So it's to do with our 10 times table, so it's 10n, but the 10 times table starts at 10, this one starts at 35, which is 25 places along, okay? So all of those numbers are like the 10 times table, shifted 25 places along, so it's 10n plus 25. Now, to all of those we've been adding on, moving the times table on a bit, but sometimes it's you have to take away, you have to subtract, it's the times table move down a bit. Okay, so we'll just do, I'll do one example like that, um, and then I'll give you some to practice on your own, and then we're pretty much done. Okay, so let's, uh, so you can see the first one there, one, four, seven, 10. It's going up in threes, it's to do with the three times table, um, so it's going to be three N, um, but the three times table is, you know, three, six, nine, twelve. This is two places lower. It's like it's been moved two places back from the two times table, or you're taking away two from each of the numbers in a two times table, however you want to think of it. Um, so it's going to be three N minus two. Right, I'll give it, there you go. Practice a few of those, pause the video. I'll go through the answers in just a second. Okay, let's go through those answers. I'm gonna put Rod on the spot again, just for the first one. Rod, it was three, eight, 13, 18. What did you get for that? Okay, so it's five times tables. Yeah, yeah, it's going up in five. It's gone down two, so it would be five. N, five N. Five N two, because it's gone down two. Five N two. Exactly, right. Five it's going up in fives, so five N, but it's two less than the five times table. It's like the five times table moved down two places. So yeah, five N minus two. Right, brilliant, thank you. Uh, so the other ones we've got, whoa, we've got a negative here, haven't we? Starts on negative two. So negative two, zero, two, four. It's all right, don't panic. It's exactly the same, okay? What are we going up in steps off? Well, we're just going up in twos, so it's gonna be two N. And then, well, the two times table starts at two, 
This sequence starts at minus two. So we've had to move down four places to go from two down to minus two, okay? Minus one, zero, minus one, minus two, okay? So it's two n minus four. Exact same thing, don't let a negative number put you off. Uh, the next one was, uh, oh, got more negatives, right? Minus five, minus two, one, four. Okay, so it's going up in threes. So it's gonna be three n. And we just gotta work out how far it's shifted down, okay? Don't let the negatives throw you. Just think about your number line, and we're trying to work out how far have we moved to go from our three times table, which starts at three, to get down to minus five, okay? Just imagine you're moving down your number line, so two, one, zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, uh, minus five, okay? We've had to move down eight places. So this one will be three n minus eight. Uh, the last one, minus one, nine, 19, 29, is going up in tens, so it's 10 n, uh, but we've had to move down 11 places from the 10 times table. So 10 n minus 11. That was the nth term. We're gonna dig a little deeper into that in the future, but I hope you found that a useful introduction and we've got the basics of the nth term all sorted there. Um, if you've got any questions about today's video or any maths questions in general, or even suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching today and for joining me here in the Maths Kitchen. I am here twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays, to help you with your maths problems. So be sure to come back and visit regularly.